Next guest is uh, one of my favorite players of all time, certainly one of my favorite Yankees. And uh, the Yankees, baseball, a little bit of turmoil, and we need a little bit, uh, a little bit of an injection of a player like this in the league now. Uh, please welcome former Yankee, the great David Wells to the show. David, what's up, buddy? Good, Ari, how you been? I've been good, man, I've been good. So, uh, what, what, what do you make of the mess that is baseball right now? I mean, you can't talk about baseball without steroids. Uh, Ryan Braun, uh, MVP a couple years ago, he agrees uh, without, a, without a positive test uh, for any drug to, uh, to, to leaving the game for an entire rest of the season. A-Rod, they want uh, the rest of the season plus another full season, which will make him 40 years old when he comes back. Could be a lifetime ban anyway with his injuries. And he's going to fight it, which will become a circus. Uh, nobody's getting into the Hall of Fame except dead people. <laughs> what's going... I mean, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what's going on, Dave? What, what, like, what, what, where, where do you sit here on steroids and the issue of who gets voted in and A-Rod? Like, can you make any sense of it for us? Well... First of all, I mean, everybody's so sick and tired of, of hearing, you know, hearing the steroid pads, all that kind of stuff. And, I mean, it, it's, you know, the game is going in a good direction. Now, all of a sudden, you see some of your top players in the game, you know, coming dirty. And yeah. I just, and, and they keep saying, you know, first suspense, slap on the hand, second, 25, or, or 50 games, you know, second time, 100, whatever it is. They want to get serious. You know what? Make it number one. You get caught once, see you later. Really? I mean, yeah. I mean, wow. Pete, Pete Rose bet on the game. He didn't. He didn't take pads. He didn't do any of that. And then look at he. He's banished from the from the Hall of Fame. Yeah. She, she was Joe Jackson, another guy. You look at that guy. He hit three hundred and something. He hit three something in the playoffs, but yeah, he he got banned. And then, but they're giving these guys, you know, second and third chances. It's it's stupid you know oh, yeah. it's really stupid and it's a shame that you know these guys are doing it because you know ryan and i have the same agent and i remember my i remember him telling me you know ryan's clean blah 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 when i was working with tbs you know go to bat for him doing all this and you know and i kind of did based on my buddy because of the fact that you know i believed him and then all of a sudden he turns around and he doesn't he doesn't fight it he accepts it and you know he's dirty well, that's, I mean, me, that's a chump right there, if you ask me, for, 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 for really, I mean, having the whole world and everyone believe him, that, thinking that he is, that he is this guy, he's clean. That's like Rafael Palmeiro saying, you know, I did not do him, and then all of a sudden he's dirty. Right. You know, it blows your mind. Right. Well, I'll tell you, well, well, see, so you're hardcore with it. And I really think Barb Giamatti would have been the same way. Like the way, I mean, he's the one who uh, ousted Rose. And Seelig is keeping it up, but uh, Giamatti is the one who initiated it. So you're pretty hardcore at this point. The way the way you clean it up is you get caught once, you're gone for life. You know, and I believe in second chances. I really do. I, but the thing is, is that you know, it's people are getting so sick and tired of this. Um, I mean, you know, I do it that way. And, and take in mind, you know, yeah, he, he let him go for the year. Uh, he, he, he's doing that. But remember, the commissioner was owner of the Milwaukee Brews at one point. Right. I guess Saunders running it now or or whatever. So maybe they did a little side deal on I don't know. We'll, we will never know. You know, but I look at it that way that, you know, he's kinda like giving them another a chance. You know, like I said, I believe in sex, but you know, this guy lied to the world. I mean and then thing is I've 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 now I've recognized I've made mistakes. Duh come on. <laughs> <laughs> now you recognize it? Yeah. You recognize it when you first get it, you dumbass. Yeah. Well, what about what about A Rod? I mean, obviously a guy uh, that uh, you've uh, you've met, you've known. Uh, do you know a bigger jerk off on the planet than A Rod? <laughs> you know what? He's put himself in a really bad situation. He says some stupid things. He's not a bad guy. He really is. Okay. Guy. I'll take your word for that. Yeah, he's, he's not a bad guy. He just, the you know, thing is that. My, <laughs> I guess you can, if you're going to do it, you know, lie until you get caught. But if you get caught, you know, and, and all this thing, you got so much evidence against you, then you just come clean. And I, I think that would be, yeah, that, that would be man enough if you just came clean and said, yeah, I did this, that, that. But, you know, he's in the situation where he, he's already admitted he's done steroids. 
So if he does this one, he's going to be banished for, for baseball, I guess. Or he's really, he's, I mean, he's really in, in a mess. So I, I don't, I don't blame him for fighting it. But you know, it, to me, it doesn't look good for him. It really does, not and, and all that. So he's fighting it. I mean, you, you look at Clemens every one day. He's saying that he's he's clean, you know. And but a lot of people they don't believe him at all. And you know. There's a lot of those guys out there that are just, you know, that I, I don't know. It, it, it's funny. They're going to they're going to say no until all the evidence is. But you know, all the evidence proves that he wasn't. But I mean, there's still a billion doubters out there with those guys. Hey, David, did you see uh, the Red Sox made a deal to acquire Jake Peavy? No, I didn't. Yeah, it's going to be a three-team rumors, deal. I heard rumors of it. Did it happen? Yeah. It's uh, they have the deal in place to ship PV to the Red Sox. I, what does that do? <laughs> I mean, as if things could get worse for the Yankees, I guess. Yeah, the Red Sox puts the Red Sox in, a, in a, uh, an excellent uh, place to sure uh, to win it all. Sure, I mean yeah. at least the American League East. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think it's it's great because you know Jake, he's proven that he can he could pitch against some of the best teams. I mean, his, when I was teammates with him in San Diego. You know he he's an incredible pitcher, but he went to he went to the American League, struggled a little bit, but now he's found his way. The guy's got he's, he's an incredible pitcher, he's got to make so yeah he's going to wreak havoc on um because he wants the ball against you know anybody the best teams in baseball he's he's going to take the ball and he's going to give you you know he's going to give you a hundred percent and that's what you got to go because you're going in there with confidence and if he does that boy oh boy he's going to have he's going to have a field day with some of those guys. Hey, oh, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, in, in football, everyone always warns against the coaching staff always tells us to put distractions aside. And, you know, that's that's a four letter word, the distractions um, in like baseball. 11, 11 letters. Yeah, <laughs> maybe baseball. How big a deal is it that this uh, a rod thing is hanging over the Yankees? Is this something that they've learned to deal with at this point? But as it gets more and more heated, does that uh, threaten the team's ability to get out there and, and do it every day in and day out? Well, no, no, no. I, I think, you know, being being part of the Yankees for four I mean, but for years there's been a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of crazy things going on with that organization, you know, um, with, with the from Starting with George, you know, you know how crazy he was, but he, <laughs> mm-hmm. but the guy was so good. He didn't care. He wanted a winning team out there. He's going to do whatever it took. You know, to make them good, but you always hear some crazy things. They always prevail. They always do something. I mean, they've got they've got guys there in place in, in that front office that you know they're they're going to find a way despite the the, the you know all the the A Rod mess and, and all that. They're going to find a way. They're going to deal with it one way or another. Luckily that they they they're uh, you know a wealthy enough organization where you know. God forbid anything happens that they, they can, you know, they can go out and get somebody else. That's, yeah, that's the thing about the Yankees, and, and that's what they'll do. If, if this is that, he comes up there, yeah, uh, I would think that they wouldn't have to pay his contract. Regardless, you hear all the stuff, you hear all the stuff that, you know, regardless, you're going to do that. That's the beauty about, about baseball. All uh, contracts are guaranteed. You know, like other sports, mm-hmm. like football, it's not guaranteed. But if you do this, I mean, that's the thing. That's the good thing about the Yankees that they can afford to go out. If it does, if they have to pay, they're going to find somebody else. They're not going to sit back on the way. They'll figure something out, mm-hmm. you know, and they'll be a great team, you know, as, as they've been for many, many years. Is this team good enough to, uh, as it stands right now, is this team good enough to make the playoffs? Well, I, I think they are. I mean, as long as the pitching holds up and, and they go deep in the game, because basically you know, everyone knows pitching – is going to is going to stop good hitting and and they've got some veteran guys enough to do it. Yeah, they're in a little in loneliness right now, but it's not it's not, I mean they've got a lot of work to do. So that unless they start if they start going on the on the slide like they've been doing, then I don't think that it's going to happen. They're just going to have to you know okay it is what it is. I would look if they if they have a feel if they think that they're not in it, let these young guys play. Let them have an opportunity. See what they're capable of doing. Before they go out and start spending a lot of money on a lot of free agents and all that, look at them. They've got enough players in the minor leagues, and they've got some quality guys there. It's just 
you are playing on the biggest stage in the world, so it's kind of tough for guys to come up there and do that right away because the pressures that New York gives gives these guys. I mean, the media for one thing, um, and the, I mean the mass on the fans. I mean, it's tough. So you got to get thick skin real quick. But you know what? If that's the case, and why not let these young guys go out there and play, see if they're capable of doing, it, and then go from there. You know, David, uh, getting back to the steroid thing, uh, how betrayed, if at all, do you feel as a pitcher knowing that some of the big-name guys that you were pitching against uh, were doing steroids? Uh, well, guys like Palmero, who's been linked to it, and, and A-Rod, you know, uh, and uh, who knows, uh, God knows who else. How betrayed do you feel as a guy competing against them where maybe your numbers could have been uh, even better than they were? And uh, yeah, does it make you mad? Well, that's funny that you said you were talking about. I was talking about that with some friends the other day, and they were asking me these same questions. And you know, just being being the guy that played in the steroid era, you know, it, it, it kind of sucked for for us guys who didn't do them because of the fact that you know. But it kind of elevated your game. You had to go in there because you knew you had to get these guys out. What pissed me off was that these guys that normally that get hit me are going 20 rows up. Right or, or something like that, and then all of a sudden now these guys are really good players, and they couldn't hit their way out of a wet paper bag. Sure. You know, let alone that, and to me it, it, it sucks because you look at the the home runs I did because I did give up home runs to A Rod, to Paul Merrill, you know, to McGuire. All these guys hit home runs off. They all hit home runs off. Yeah. Um, but to me it's like if if it was a clean game, would those home runs have gone that far? The ones that just made it over would. Would that have been it? Because you look 25 years ago, a lot of guys had a lot of warning track power. Now all of a sudden they're 30 freaking rows up. Mm. It sucks. It kind of pisses me off, you know. And I, especially with this Bronx thing, I think Matt Kemp ought to get it. You know, I think they should overturn that. And in, in yeah, situations. These guys Kemp's numbers were better, right? Runner, yeah, give it up to the runner-up guys that that were in second place. You know, strip them from it. If they're going to keep giving them chances, you know what? Then People are going to get really disgusted with the game, with the players, and you know, and you're seeing all, you're hearing all the, you know, all, all the, the back, the back talk on uh, what, what brought all these people who are fans of them. Now they're that one person got thrown out of the game for putting fraud, you know, instead of Braun, and then they kicked that person out of the game. You know, uh, those people have a right to that because they've been mis, mis, you know, it's like it's like Kevin said, they all been misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know. You talk about guys uh, who normally couldn't hit you, and then all of a sudden they're hitting you 20, 20 rows up. Was there more of a transparency during the steroid era in the locker room where the pitchers would know the guys who were juicing? And are there guys that everyone in locker rooms knew were on the stuff, but that hasn't come out in the public? I'm, I'm, I guarantee you uh, it, it, we, we, I mean, you can't take survey, but you look at guys and go, you know what, that guy's on it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's the thing. But, you know, a code's a code, and, yeah. you know, you you, you got to go by it because you don't want to throw your teammates under the bus. You don't want to be that conseco who just, I mean, but he <laughs> looks like a genius now after all this, you know, and, and he's and he's kind of opened the eyes to, to the world that, you know, this stuff did go on, but he was a pissed-off individual. You know, so he kind of went after everybody, and 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 now it's like these people getting caught, proven. You know, I see all these names on these on this list. You know, I, I like to, to know the other list, like the Mitchell report. I really like to know that one too. I was yeah. out with it. Me too. Know, but yeah, to me it would be good. And then this guy uh, Genesis, there's a lot more guys now that that are on this list. And you know, I just think if you're on that list, period. You know what? <laughs> You got some explaining, dude, but they're all going to lie and they're all going to keep our trust until they get caught. And, you know, and that's, that's the shame of the game. That's what's really changed the game, I think. And, you know, it just sucks for those guys that who are, who are clean. Sure. You know, Chris Davis in Baltimore, he's having a banner year, and now he's under scrutiny. Uh, you look at Jose Batista in Toronto the last few years, you know, he's hitting 50 home runs. He's under scrutiny. He's getting tested, you know, left and right. So I mean it's it's stuff nuts, man. It's just it just sucks for the for the paying you know for the paying customer. 
Well, Dave, listen, man, uh, I, uh, I, uh, if I ever have a kid, I'm going to tell him, uh, I want you to be, when you grow up, I want you to be like David Wells, not A-Rod. <laughs> That's I, guess, I, guess, I guess the book looked good. There's all the backaches, you know, be playing hungover. <laughs> yeah. Playing after all, was it? No, I'd rather you be, da I'd rather my kid be David Wells than A-Rod or any of these guys. I love you, brother. Come back anytime, all right? Thank you. I, I appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. All right, the great David Wells will be back right after these words.